Hi, this is Steve Lochran, giving a very quick demo of the S3A delegation token stuff that's now in Hadoop trunk as of the Hadoop 14556 Jira being merged in. This allows applications to submit work to a cluster running in cloud infrastructure such as Amazon EC2 in which the shared cluster does not contain any of the credentials needed to access Amazon's S3 store. Instead, the secrets that the user themselves have are used to create AWS session tokens or AWS role tokens, which are then tasked with the job and then used within, used by the job within the shared cluster to access that data. This means that you can have a deploy a cluster with the minimal amount of privileges you expect, such as maybe read and write access and shared binary and logs buckets. But then people with more privileges can submit work in to access their data. They can also even submit in their own encryption settings in there so that you can use that to decrypt the data as well. When we use session tokens, the lifespan of the credentials issued is between one and 36 hours. After that time, you know that even the credentials have been compromised, they can't access anything. When we issue a role token, the lifespan of that is between 15 minutes and 12 hours. And we not only request a specific restricted role, we configured on the client, but also we cut down the privileges usable with the issued token to be restricted to purely that of working with the S3 bucket that we know this file system is using and with the matching DynamoDB table, which Seagull used to deliver consistency, plus all your KMS keys that you may be using for encrypting or decrypting data. We don't go near that problem. As a result, that even locks things down even more. Not only do I have a set of credentials that may only be valid for 12 hours, but if somebody gets them, then they're not going to access, be able to access any part of your AWS secrets other than the single container for which the job actually requests the tokens for. Yeah. This is my local machine. It has lots of rights. I can list a directory here using uh, Hadoop FS LS commands. takes its time, it's going over a long haul link, link and a VPN. And it finds some files, that's very good. This is local. Now, let's go to my test cluster. This is the remote machine. If I click host name here, it will tell me I am some temporary container that's been spun up actually. A yarn cluster running containerized inside a yarn cluster. Do the same ls command it's going to fail it's going to fail because this test cluster which is created with jenkins does not have any secrets yes i could configure it through the admin control panel and give it the secrets but that would be missing the point i don't want to give it secrets if i brought this cluster up inside amazon's ec2 infrastructure every vm would have the permissions of the role to which it was instantiated with you say which i am role these machines come up with they would get those permissions. That would be the absolute minimum. What you still want to do though, is you want to restrict that so it doesn't have any of the rights of the privileged users, such as myself. That is what would come in with the extra work with the job itself. So the test cluster, no access to your data. Me, I have access to data. It's all very well, it says, I want you to do a disk CP. That's, that's my local, that's my US thing here, Steve Muni. Let's have a look at what's in London. in the London bucket and oops it's pretty empty so that doesn't, doesn't look like I have anything actually let us now do a disk CP my bit of 
the US to believe it. So I need this CP. Update source is my US West 2 bucket. Destination is London. Let's kick this off. When you're running Kerberize, to do knows to always ask every file system for delegation token. HDFS has always issued them. Microsoft Azure and WASB file systems connectors, they can issue them as well. If you have Kerberos on there, what we're doing here is slightly different in that we are talking to Amazon's token service, STS, and asking for a set of short-lived credentials to talk to AWS, which we then marshal up inside the delegation token. At the far end, they're extracted and they are used by the workers in the deployed application to actually talk to S3 for that specific file system. So here is what a token I've got issued, typed as a wrong token, and passed in my encryption details. I had this specific role ID, which we've been restricted further. And it's been restricted purely to the HW Dev Steve London bucket. And oh, it's only valid for a few hours, so it was issued. So it's 51, it'll be valid for an hour. So, while we're doing talking that, the job actually finished. If I do the LS now, there should be something in London. Even though a token's been issued, it doesn't remember that. Next time it goes back and asks for it, that's not a problem. We, do, we did some load tests to see how many tokens you can issue before S3 no, complains, sorry, before STS complains. The answer is you can start asking for a few hundred a second. It reacts not by locking out the entire account or even that particular user, but merely by throttling you. Uh, for record, I did that on a weekend and so none of my colleagues would notice. It could have been a bit disastrous, but all is good. Anyway, so there we go. What you've just seen there is me logged into a machine locally where I have some S3 secrets, AWS secrets, running a DCP job with my access rights inside a test cluster on Lorange, which doesn't have any AWS credentials of its own. Instead, when the job got submitted, I asked the Amazon STS service to give me some short-lived AWS role credentials with restricted access to specific buckets they were working with. We got them, we sent them with the job, this CP did the copy, it got the results back. That then is how we can deliver secure cluster access in shared clusters running an EC2 with lower privileges. Oh, and as you've seen, it works on test clusters that aren't actually running an AWS infrastructure. It will deploy to any cloud infrastructure or even physical cluster you choose to deploy to.